हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल एट द रेट मैड बर्थडे वी हैव सैटरडे स्पेशल सीरीज ऑफ हेरिसन बेस्ट लेक्चर टुडे वी विल स्टडी द कफ व्हिच इज हेरिसन ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट एडिशन चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेंटी एट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल स्टडी अबाउट मैकेनिज्म ऑफ देयर कैन बी मैकेनिकल स्टिमुलस देयर कैन बी केमिकल स्टिमुलस केमिकल स्टिमुलस लाइक कैप्सिकम मैकेनिकल स्टिमुलस लाइक एनी म्यूकस एनी डर्ट पार्टिकल they will st stimulate mechanical sensors or chemical sensors present in the air and initiate the cough reflex now how will they initiate the cough reflex there are ma mainly two channels one is the transient receptor potential channel transient receptor potential channel that is trpc transient receptor potential channel and other receptor is p2x3 this receptor to remember is important because there are uh, many therapeutic drugs which can act on these receptors and uh, may have therapeutic role in of depression so p2x3 is adenosine triphosphate activated ion channel this is also an channel adenosine triphosphate activated ion channel so with the help of mechano sensor a delta fiber are activated and through chemosensory pathway c fiber are activated so a alpha and c a delta and c fiber are activated these receptor are present in larynx trachea bronchi till the lung parenchyma everywhere these receptors are present and also these receptor are present in external auditory canal through the receptor vagus nerve branch that is arnold's nerve finally the stimulus go to brain through vagus nerve so the afferent is vagus nerve then in brain it reaches to nucleus tractus solitarius nucleus tractus solitarius stimulate the ventral respiratory group and bodinger complex of respiratory center and it then lead to efferent to glottis diaphragm and abdominal muscle and lead to cough now what happens during cough first of all vocal cord closes after deep inspiration okay this lead to closure of upper ear closure of air now next mechanism is expiratory muscle contraction expiratory muscle contraction lead to generation of positive intrathoracic pressure this positive intrathoracic pressure increase as much as 300 mm of mercury and then sudden opening of vocal cord lead to cough formation so when this mechanism is not present or impaired then there is impaired cough so the causes of impaired cough are respiratory muscle weakness chest wall or abdominal pain 
chest wall deformity, severe kyphos scoliosis, impaired glottic closure or tracheostomy, central respiratory depression, patient is having abnormal air secretion, severe dysfunction, tracheobronchomalacia, bronchiectasis and tracheal or bronchial stenosis. So these are the causes of impaired cuff and airway clearing. Now according to the duration, cuff is divided into three types. Acute, subacute and chronic cuff. Acute cuff less than three week, subacute cuff three to eight week and chronic cuff is more than eight week. Causes of acute cuff are forearm body, respiratory tract infection, aspiration, inhalation of any noxious substance. Cause of subacute cuff. Subacute cuff, we have to remember two main causes. One is tracheobronchitis. And second is post viral tussive syndrome. Post viral tussive syndrome. In chronic, main causes are TB, use of ACE inhibitors, for cardiopulmonary causes. So we have to do thorough history and physical examination. Cardiopulmonary examination, we will find V's or rails in CHF or in COPD and in CHF respectively. Now, what will we do for assessment of chronic cough? For the assessment of chronic cough, first of all, history is very important. Like in case of asthma, there is chronic cough. We will ask for history of V's, history of exposure to dirt, and then a, a exaggeration of asthma, dirt, pollen. Okay, then in physical examination, I have told you cardiopulmonary disease history. We have to ask for the to patient. Then examination of external auditory canal is important because there can be stimulation of arnold's nerve there. Then uh, nasal and throat examination should be there. The next important is sputum examination. Sputum CE and sputum culture should be done. Then we should know about adequacy of sputum. When we say that sputum given by the patient is adequate for culture. Neutrophil present in the sputum should be more than 25 per low power field. And epithelial cells should be less than 10 per low power field. This sample is known as adequate sample. And next is chest x-ray. We can find pathology in chest x-ray like in TB with chronic cough. There will be infiltrates or upper lobe cavitation etc. in the x-ray. So, now we should know about causes of chronic cough with normal chest x-ray. Most important cause in this in old age is use of ACE inhibitor. Why there is chronic dry cough in case of ACE inhibitor? Because ACE metabolize bradykinin. So ACE inhibitor use will lead to increase in bradykinin. And bradykinin sensitize nerve ending. And therefore, it will lead to chronic cough. So, we have to withhold ACE inhibitor and we should start. If after withholding ACE inhibitor for one month, Cuff is persistent, then it is less likely that cuff was due to ACE inhibitor use. Okay, next second cause for chronic cuff with normal X ray is GERD. 
mechanism for cough in gastroesophageal reflux disease is reflux of gastric content into lower esophagus esophagus lower esophagus will get stimulated that is vagus nerve is stimulated other mechanism proposed is aspiration of gastric content which will lead to chemical pneumonitis and that can elicit cough but main mechanism is lower esophagus stimulus leading to vagus stimulation and leading to chronic cough next mechanism for cough with normal x-ray is cough with asthma this is usually known as cough variant asthma in which there is no wheeze no shortness of breath no chest tightness and usually normal x-ray in this we will make the diagnosis of asthma with the help of pft in which there will be obstructive pattern and there will be response reversibility with use of bronchodilators fourth mechanism fourth cause of chronic cough with normal x-ray is eosinophilic bronchitis eosinophilic bronchitis eosinophilic bronchitis is defined when there is normal chest x-ray with cough with sputum examination having eosinophilia of more than 3% without air flow obstruction or bronchial hyperreactivity hyper responsiveness or reactivity this is very important because if this is positive if this is positive then it will become asthma so this is the difference between eosinophilic bronchitis and asthma now treatment for chronic cough with normal x-ray we will uh, see according to the causes we have seen in ace inhibitor ace inhibitor we have to do with whole ace inhibitor and shift to another drug that is arb okay in gerd we have to give antacids or ppi or lifestyle modification like the food that trigger gerd in that patient or we have to say the patient to not to sleep just after taking the meals to sit or to walk after taking the meals then in case of cough variant asthma we have to say to pay, give patient bronchodilator and inhaled corticosteroid usually saba plus inhaled corticosteroid obviously and in case of eosinophilic bronchitis also we have to give the patient beta now symptom based treatment of cough there is dry cough then we should give cough suppressant cough suppressant usually we use are opiate dextromethorphan opiate codeine both these are having potential for addiction okay and they cause drowsiness therefore their use have been decreased over time dextromethorphan it is also opioid agonist but this is over the counter drug having less side effect less drowsiness 
and less abuse potential. Next one drug is benz benzonated benzonated it inhibit neural pathway that is sensory nerve in coprolex path then we can use inhaled lidocaine inhaled lidocaine but side effect of this is it will cause anesthesia local anesthesia inhaled local lidocaine causes local anesthesia that will increase the chances of aspiration okay other drug which can be used are beta 2 agonist leukotriene antagonist glucocorticoid m3 receptor antagonist and k antagonist now one term used is cuff hyper responsive syndrome cuff hyper risk hypersensitivity syndrome sorry cuff hyper sensitivity syndrome what happens in cuff hyper sensitivity syndrome there is no pathology actually there is there are sensitized nerve ending in some individual sensitized nerve ending and sensory nerves which lead to chronic refractory cuff this does not get treated by these methods like opiate dextromethorphan or local lidocaine etc treatment of chronic refractory cuff is like we use in my fibromyalgia syndrome we can use gabapentin pre gabapentin in case of chronic hypersensitivity syndrome then new drugs which have not come in market but under trial are one is neurokinin one receptor antagonist Harrison's does mention this. Second is TRPV1, transient receptor potential vanguard one channel antagonist. The name of this drug has been given. That is P2X3 channel antagonist in Harrison's. This drug has been mentioned, and we have learned about this receptor. in the initial part of this video the drug name is gefa gefa fixant so this is all about cuff i hope you like the video if you have any doubts regarding the session you can ask in comment section and kindly like and subscribe the channel Thank you very much.